Hi, my name is Lindsay Neiman from Amika Goldens, and I'm uh, here talking to you today about how to groom your golden. Specifically, we're going to talk about grooming the feathers, front feathers, hocks, tails, and pants. And I'm going to show you how I groom my dogs, both show and pet. Um, there's a lot of ways to do things, but I'm going to show you how I personally trim my dogs. Uh, to start, you would want to start with a clean dog who's been brushed out. And we have that here with us. So we're gonna get started on the easiest areas to trim and work our way to the more complex. So for me, one of the easiest areas to trim um, is these front feathers. And again, I'm gonna start out with a dog. I've already misted and brushed all of this. And as you can see, it's a little bit jagged. Uh, this dog has some breakage, but I'm still gonna always pretty much trim this in the same way. Hang on, let me adjust him a little bit so he doesn't try and help. So to trim feathers, what I do is I'll brush everything down. I'll bring it down with my hand and you have this little tail here right above that big pad on the back of the foot. So what I'm gonna do is, he's helping out. I'm gonna bring it down. I like straight shears. I'm gonna take them and go straight across. And I left a little bit, I'll fix it. And what that does is it just gives you a nice clean line at the bottom. One of the things that I started doing at the beginning of my grooming with Goldens, and I see some people do, is they wanna pick up the leg and try and do this line, that, you know, so that they're cutting every hair. But what that can cause is a weird little stair step. And ideally in a dog like this, who's an adult male special, I'll have this hair not breaking and it'll create that pretty cascade of hair. Uh, the other thing that contributes to this looking nice and clean is the fact that I've cleaned up this area nicely. I can do a little bit more. You can always clean up around that back pad, but what that does is it gives that pastern a little bit more strength, and that's what you want in a sporting dog. Um, so that's how I do my feathers. If I had a dog who I knew was going into brush or in a pet home that didn't want as much hair, you can always take that up higher. So that's how I do my feathers. Uh, let's move on to the next easiest thing, which is tails. And again, I pretty much always groom my tails the same way. I take a nice brushed out tail. This dog has a ton of hair, so. He was previously trimmed, but he still has more than enough. So from our standard, our tails should go to our hocks. About our hock, rascal stop. Should go about to our hocks. And if I put my hand on the tip of his tailbone, it's at just about the hocks. And then you can see he has this extra hair. So what I'm gonna do is trim that off. And how much you leave will depend on the individual dog their structure and the texture you're dealing with. Again, with my straight shears, I've grabbed everything that I had brushed down, and then I'm gonna make a pom-pom out of this little amount. I have my hand over the tailbone to protect and make sure I'm not going to cut off his tail. And it's a warm day here, so he's not feeling particularly helpful for us. But again, I kept my little Pom pom. And I like straight shears. You can do this with um, thinning shears. A lot of people do that as well. I just like the crisp look of a of doing the straight shears. Although it is a balance because this is supposed to be a relatively naturally trimmed breed. So here you can see I have this nice little pom pom. And what happens is when I shake it out. It creates that pretty fan that everyone is used to seeing when they see these goldens shown. And if I had a dog with a different texture or that I didn't get that quite nice enough, you can always finish it up by cutting it, but in general, you won't need to. And then you can see where that falls on him. All right, so let's move on to pants. Uh, Pants and hocks are going to be an area that take just a little bit more time. So in 
all dog, most dog structure, this is not true for all, you want that point of your hip, stop, point of the hip to hit at the point of the toes. This extra hair back here um, on the Goldens can either muddy that look, it can make it hard for the judge to see how clean the dog is going on the down and back, but as a pro, if you had a dog with a weak thigh, this dog doesn't really have a weak thigh, but you might want to leave more bulk back there to give the imp impression that the dog had more thigh. In this case, the dog has sufficient thigh, but he has a ton of hair back here that would make it, especially between his tail and that pants, it's gonna make it difficult for a judge to see his how clean he is going. So with my uh, thinning shears, the way that I trim my pants is I'll have combed everything out. I'll come over here, stop. I'll pull everything out and I'm lining up with his anatomy, his thigh. And I'll pull everything out to 90 degrees. And I'll just take it off with thinning shears. You don't wanna just go crazy. And what some people wanna do is just go in there. But what I find is that that doesn't really give you the shape and it definitely doesn't highlight the angle. And I think it's important, especially on a dog like this one who could have a little bit more rear angle that you highlight what he has. He's being not very cooperative, but as you can see each pass, I'm ending up with a little bit cleaner look. And when we're all done, I'm gonna bring you back out to the side so you can see how natural it looks. You don't see a harsh shape. All you're seeing is less hair and a little bit more, I'll have you uh, bring the camera over here. So what you should be able to see is just a little bit smoother line to the back side of this dog, a little bit more tame. And again, it doesn't look like I just, you know, took some straight shears and went at him. Um, stop. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the Hawks, uh, dog willing. Hopefully he'll let me get through this without uh, fidgeting too much. So I'm gonna do the same thing. And again, I'm gonna use his anatomy and his build to sort of help me. And this is really important on a dog like him because see how much he's fussing? And that, unfortunately for him, it's hot and we're in Texas um, and I groom outdoors. So you can see when I comb everything to 90 degrees, um, I have a bunch that hangs over where his anatomy would be. So I'll comb over everything over, stop. And again, a, a dog like this, this is really helpful because he fusses so much. Stop. Asshole. We're gonna have to do this again. So I'll go to the inside of his foot and I'll just clean everything that hangs over my comb. That also gives me a little bit of protection from accidentally getting him. So. And you always want to try and groom where, with the dog in the right spot. Unfortunately with this dog, he makes that a little difficult. So I'm going to keep going back and forth. You can always take more hair off, but you can't put it back on. So I always go with a little bit less is more. And I'm willing to make a couple more passes in order to get the look I'm looking for. So let's bring the camera. You can see that I don't really have a flat table to the back. And we're gonna come back around and you can see I have a much more tame hawk. And then just to clean it up a little bit, I'll bring everything in line and then I'll just sort of smooth out that line a little bit. But again, it's not the real harsh look that you see 
on a lot of the dogs. And I might maneuver it up this way. I'm always going back to what is the dog's anatomy and the dog's structure. So missing a little bit here. What? So, and then the last piece is get a nice looking hawk is to clean up this area right at the back of the pad. I like these. I can see that this little area is hanging over a little bit. I'll clean up this pad. And this just gives you a much stronger, cleaner looking pastern. I'll just kind of clean things up but the beauty of doing it this way is that it just looks a little bit more natural it does take a little bit more effort than and I can show you on his other hawk how I used to trim hawks and how I see a lot of people do it um, it will work on say a female with less hair or a pet groom however this method is a little bit hard for a dog like him with a lot of hair but what you would do is brush everything out and then just scissor down the problem with this is it creates a very harsh angle here and then it's very obvious the dog has been groomed versus you know a more natural look which the breed should be shown in a more natural look so that shows you how I groom hawks. Um, I want to thank you for grooming golden retriever feathers with me today and hopefully you learned something.